My name is Joel uh, Marie. And so I broke C5, so that's five vertebrae from the, the, the skull. So it was December 15th, 2011, and I was actually doing an adventure camp for youngsters, for, for kids up to about 13 years old. And one of the um, things we had to do was build a raft. I was standing flush on the river. It must have been an object under the water or a sandbag, and I dived and my hands separated, and I hit, uh, my head hit first. Um, and yeah, I was instantly paralyzed from the neck down. When it happened, there was such a piece about me, like a piece I've never experienced before. That's how my journey started. Just seeing that support of friends and family, and all the other stuff kind of fell away, it's, it's not important. I think it's amazing what kind of the human mind and the spirit can achieve once you're forced into a situation. On the first x-ray, the doctor said, will never move anything from your shoulders down the train. And I was just like, I know that that's not going to be the truth. I might no feeling in my arms. But yeah, after like two months, all of a sudden I could feel like a bit of my biceps. A little bit further, I could start feeling my forearms. One day I'd wake up and my wrist would start moving, which for my level of injury is impossible according to doctors. One day I woke up and I could feel my index finger, which is impossible. Two weeks ago, um, I started being able to use my abs and then my abs started working. So my stomach muscles started working. And he said, oh, it's been quite amazing. Everyone said that that's the end, just get used to it. Your life has changed. And I said, no way, I'm going to get better, I know it. After hospital, it was difficult to, to live here and to be able to look out the window and see the mountain and, and know that I can't climb back on the mountain. And um, I was very involved with the church, doing a lot of functions and I was a youth leader. Uh, working with kids a lot, or teenagers quite a lot, and uh, then a lot of orphanages and that kind of stuff. And I've always had a passion for kids, but now that I'm in the situation, and only because I've been in it so long, I've got such a passion to help uh, underprivileged kids in South Africa that are disabled. This is all I want to do in life, is just help out in some way, because I see that there's such a need. I'm so privileged and blessed that I have medical aid, and then I've got family. And I realize that like anything that you own can get taken away in a second. Um, you know, maybe insurance can cover it in that. But there's nothing that's really truly yours in this world. And the only thing, yeah, I got to be like my crutch and for me to lie, rely on was a friend and family. Like, I think this day and age, no one sits around for even say half a day without a phone, without a book, without work, without doing something. You never sit and just think like, who am I? Where, where do I fit in in life? Am I happy with who I am? And now I'm forced to do that. And it's actually not a bad thing. I'm discovering things about myself I never knew. And like put down your phone, like stop Facebook for a while, and just, just start living. Like I, I see, it's become a bit of a joke now. I see people at restaurants and that, and everyone's head is down. And I always think they're praying, and I'm like, no, they're actually playing on their phones. And our life is passing us by. 15 years ago, we didn't have that stuff. And somehow we managed to survive, and life was awesome, and life was amazing. Now with all the, the latest gadgets and the, what's the latest trend and the new fashion and all that, I think our life is passing us by. And so my advice is to just seriously, like it sounds cheesy, stop and smell the roses. Get out there and spend time with friends. If you've got issues with family members, sort it out. If you've got issues like a, if you need to apologize to a friend, don't wait because you never know when it's going to happen. I thought I was invincible and one jump into a river has changed my whole life. It could be a car accident, it could be, it could be a disease, it could be anything. And when you're lying in your deathbed or in your sickbed and you don't know what the outcome is going to be. When I was in hospital, I almost died twice because of complications with infections and lung problems and that. They said to my parents, you can go say goodbye. But if I knew that this is what I would have learned, I definitely would have dropped a lot of the things that I thought was important. Going to gym for two days or two hours a day and all that kind of stuff instead fill it with like other things such a, a big world and I know that one day and I'll be, be back on top um, and yeah that's keeping me going because once you, you lose hope you might as well just dig your own grave and jump in there.